Hey, welcome to What's the Word. Uh, thanks for tuning in today. A uh, special episode. If you listened to our last episode, you might have an idea of what we're talking about today. Today, we are joined by my co-host, Zach Hartle. Zach Hartle, welcome to What's the Word. Jason, 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 it's good to be here. I'm glad to see you again. I have not seen you in two weeks. This is a, Where does the time go? I don't know. It seems to be just disappearing this year, that's for sure. All right. So in our last episode, we got together, we talked about um, introducing myself as a co-host and got my little bit of my background and a little bit of the reasons behind uh, my interest in the podcast. Uh, so of course, we're turning the tables this week, we're going to ask you the harder questions, the more deep and probing questions that we want to know about Zach Hartle. So Zach, in previous episodes, we talked about the RAP program, and you happened to mention that you actually were a RAP student. And I was curious about how you got into the trade and what your decision was at such a young age to actually move into the trades, especially the electrical trade. So, so can you kind of tell us, hey, what were you thinking back then? Yeah, for sure. So uh, the RAP program here in Alberta, registered apprenticeship program, uh, like we talked about with Chelsea, uh, it's an it's an opportunity for high school students to enter a trade or apprenticeship and work for a company and gain hours towards their first year apprenticeship. So there's really good companies out there that are willing to take on these high school students and teach them. And then it's a really cool program uh, that the schools offer as well. And like through careers, the next generation and stuff like that. Um, and, and really, I mean, you ask how I chose electrical. I didn't, there was no, there was no choosing for me. It was like, I was in high school. I had really supportive parents. They weren't, they wasn't, you have to go to university or anything like that. It was a, you have to try something, you have to do something. And I was a little under motivated, under interested in high school. So my grades weren't great and I didn't like it that much. And I had a buddy who was doing carpentry and he knew he wanted to be a carpenter. Like dad was a carpenter, uncle was a carpenter. So he did the rap program because he was like, why do shop class at school when I can go literally frame houses? So he did that in grade 11 and made a bunch of money. And I was like, well, that seems kind of cool. Maybe I'll try something. So, you know, go to the student counselor and they're like, here, fill out this test. And I do like a 20 question quiz and they come back and they're like, here's your recommended trades. And it was like locksmith and electrician. And I don't know, maybe refrigeration mechanic or something like that. Right. They came back with the top three and I was like, well, I don't know anything about any of those. And she's like, and the counselor just said, well, we have an electrical company who I think we could get a placement with. Does that sound okay? Yep. And then here I am. So I started with a company. I was 16 uh, worked six months of high school, like for half of grade 12. Um, so yeah, before I graduated high school, I had already had 1100 hours towards my first year apprenticeship. Holy smokes. So expedited that, um, into graduating. And then right after that, you were just into the trade then. Yeah, it was pretty cool experience. Like yeah, I worked like the summer plus the September to December. Like I remember it. And I mean, it was tough, right? As a 16, like 16 year old kid, like that shapes you for sure. Right. Like whether you want to say it toughens you up. Like, I mean, we were talking 15 years ago at this point. Right. So yeah, like toughens you up, um, you know, just, but I mean, that's, those are, it's, it's all about experiences too. So yeah, we say, yeah, it toughens you up because it's, it's definitely a dose of reality too. So you, you kind of get some perspective on society and stuff. <laughs> like, and having to wake up every day at five 30 to drive to work. Like, just like when I say toughens up, I don't mean like people were mean or anything. Like, I just mean like it was life. You had to wake up at a time and go to work and work eight. Like I'd never put in an eight hour day of physical labor. I remember my first day was like, you know, first year on a big new construction, it was digging trenches. Like I dug trenches for like, I don't know, the first six months I was there, but it was like, I remember going home the first day and it was like 6 PM and I went to bed. I was like, I'd never worked a full day work in my whole life. Right. So it's just a different experience. Right. I often hope and kind of wish that there was those uh, opportunities for, for young people just to be exposed to 
industry, like in some sort of co-op like that, maybe they don't have to be locked into one trade per se for ever but i mean just an experience like similar to what you did but maybe you do a month as a locksmith a, lo a month as the electrician i think that would be so beneficial to people i mean to give you some perspective of what's going on there it's something i i think it's coming like i think it's getting better even in the last i don't know since i did it right you hear more and more about it like it was not advertised at my school i literally had to go to my guidance counselor and say this is what i want to do and they were like oh well, I guess so. And then kind of like had to learn it. And now I think there's a lot more support for getting into the trade at a young age. Yeah. Well, I mean, in the last, I don't know, I guess decade, I mean, social media, the internet, now it's easier to get that information out. Right. Whereas before it was definitely learn from a friend through a friend. Right. Right. So through the rap program, obviously you weren't scared out of the trade. It sounds like it was a different type of learning in that training you were also a member of the skills team uh so you, i know that you were very successful in your skills competitions what pushed you into doing those competitions yeah so um the provincial skills and further on from that i guess um honestly that was another one of those things where it wasn't really planned it wasn't something i searched out and i consider myself very lucky in my apprenticeship and i'm truly grateful for the experiences but i was just hanging out one day at i just finished first year school and i got a phone call from somebody i can't even remember who and they just asked hey uh, we noticed you were uh, an electrician born you know before or i guess after this date would you be interested in competing in a skills competition and i was like well i don't know i don't know if i can get time off work like i didn't know a whole lot about it and I spoke with my company and was like, Hey, I got a call from this person. And they had actually knew about it a little more than I did. And they were like, yeah, it's a great opportunity. You should go. And, um, as you mentioned, I was super young and like just come out of first year school. Uh, and I had, I'm not complaining at all, but I had really only dug trenches and glued together PVC conduit for a year. Like I knew there was so much more to the trade, seeing a couple other things going on around me with like the temporary power hookups and stuff. So I knew there was more to it but I hadn't experienced it all yet. And uh, so I went to this competition knowing pretty little and I did very, very poorly my first year, but it was such an eye-opening experience. So I competed in what it's now called industrial control. So wiring up an automated control sequence on some hardware that you install limit switches and pressure sensors back to a PLC in a cabinet and then even programming that PLC. So obviously I didn't, know what a PLC was at that point. Like I was like clueless when I arrived, I actually thought I would be competing in the residential wiring one. So I'd kind of like looked up a little bit on the internet about how to strip Lumex and stuff like that. And I got there and maybe my own fault for not like getting more information, but that was kind of how it started. And then the year after I was still eligible. So I went back with a, I don't know, I guess a hunger to learn more. So yeah, then a taste for success, I guess, because you were successful. You were a, a local, provincial, and national uh, medalist, as far as uh, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah, for sure. So because I was young enough my first year, I knew what to expect kind of the second year. So I spoken with some of my instructors at the uh, Technical Institute where I was doing my training. And they were super supportive. There was a couple guys, and I mean, one in particular really just took me under his wing and trained me right would spend hours training on the stuff and yeah eventually I was able to go back and actually two years in a row I was a gold medalist in Alberta and then went to a national competition um one year placing I, I don't know not winning and then actually the final year of my age eligibility I did win gold provincials nationals and then was able to go compete in Germany as well at the world skills level and of course, I was going to just allude to what was the highlight of your skills experience. And I would think uh, all expenses paid trip to Germany probably <laughs> is at the top of that list. Uh, yeah, definitely. It was like, I mean, a highlight. Um, it's a, I mean, for anyone who's listening, who's heard of or seen the provincial or even the national skills competition, the world's is just like a whole other level. It's like 
25,000 people walking through this giant stadium, um, four day long competition, obviously in a different country with a different primary language. Um, so yeah, it was definitely a highlight of that whole experience, but just the, even the training for it. I mean, I was fortunate enough, again, the company I worked for was very generous. They gave me lots of time to train and kind of tailored a little bit of my work towards training for the competition. Was there anything like any observations or um, anything you, you, any takeaways from that trip to Germany, but that maybe changed the way that you worked as an electrician? Did you, you find any hints or anything or? I don't know if there was anything like at the competition that I really took away. I mean, you're like so focused on the competition that you don't have time to look around, but just in that training process, I really got into like the groove of trying to find efficient ways to do things. And I really brought a lot of that back with me after the competition to try and increase my efficiency and my workflow in the field and try and get, you know, tasks done in a more efficient manner. Right. I mean, you think back to all the times you like three trips up a ladder to do something and like you do that at a competition you're not going to finish the competition. Right. So just a lot of that, I guess. Yeah. Well, we did host world skills in Calgary. I'm going to guess it was a decade ago. And, and you could see just even some of the equipment that the competitors were using in electrical uh, was a little different. Some efficiencies, like I saw guys with almost like a pouch on, on their hand where they could pull out, um, terminating screwdrivers and there was magnetic um magnetic bands on their on their arms just for for speed yeah definitely like the magnetic wristband for the screws and like you have specialized tools um and yeah i mean you talk about world skills 2009 was the one in calgary um And yeah, it's all based upon European standards. So your world skills is more of a European organization. Um, So a lot of the equipment and material and tool or, and yeah, products that they use are more of a European style wiring method than a North American style wiring method. So it's, it's a pretty big learning curve, right? Like you wouldn't think it, but even they're like plastic wire mold, wire management tray, you know, kind of like our finger duct over there has no fingers. There's no spaces but it like, it cuts differently, you know, it's like thinner and more malleable and it just, I don't know, everything's a little bit just different. Yeah. There's clearly a difference in electrical installations in Europe versus North America. Um, I mean, you would have noticed that while you were in Europe, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing as well. I, I know I've noticed it over the years as well. So coming back from your uh, skills competition, you then, of course, you're now a journeyman electrician. Um, I know that you are an instructor now teaching apprenticeship, but one of the things I want to ask you about is, have you always been so tech savvy? Has that something that, that maybe started as you were exploring PLCs or it's, is it something you've kind of always just, um, followed? Um, yeah, I mean, you mentioned PLCs. I actually, I do not like programming PLCs. I get why people like it. I can't st- I don't know what it is about it. I, it's not for me. I think I just of the age and of the generation and I had computers and I like computers and, you know, I think you can use computers very efficiently for different things. So yeah, no specific tech savviness. I just, I don't know. It's just something we use all the time. Well, I'm going to just kind of bore down on this a little more now because I mean, not that it's sophisticated technology, but I mean, there are, like you've got quite the portfolio on the internet for instructional videos. You've got videos ranging from do it yourself stuff at home to electrical to even just simple ways to, to work with uh, online software. Uh, Where did that come from? Where did that interest come from for you to get involved in that? I think it's just like, you're talking about, I saw I do have a YouTube channel, which is obviously is what you're talking about. Um, which I mean, check out the link in the description below everyone like, and subscribe, please. Everyone who's listening, um, or you may be watching this video there. Um, but yeah, I think for me, it just, there's uh, through instructing and through teaching people how to do things, there's gotta be a better way than 
trying to meet face to face to cover simple topics. And a lot of the stuff I have on there, it started as just like, okay, these are problems that students have often, or maybe this is something I wish we had an extra 20 minutes or an hour to spend on in class or something that maybe students really want to see more examples of. And, you know, a group of instructors that we work with um, kind of started filming these videos that could be supplemental resources. And yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed it and I get very positive feedback from students, um, my students, as well as from other groups. I think they just liked it. And so I, it wasn't a huge amount of work. Um, so I just kept kind of building that portfolio, I guess, of videos and helping it grow. And then as teaching shifted to online, I mean, what better way to teach someone how to use a computer than to show them, right? You know, we got the students coming online who don't know how to use the computer very well, the Microsoft programs or whatever efficiently. What better way than to just show a quick video, film it? I mean, there's lots of stuff out there that speaks to those things, but I think building content ourselves, us as instructors, we can narrow in on exactly what our students need. There's no fluff. There's no additional, there's no, you know, methods for doing it. This is how you, we think is the best to be successful in our program. So Zach, you're a master electrician. You have a instructor diploma from Vancouver Community College, and you recently completed a business certificate. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, within the last couple of years, I finished a, a certificate of business skills um, through Thompson Rivers University. That was a good program. And that has, I mean, I've applied that towards a blue seal endorsement or a blue seal here in Alberta, right? Business competencies certificate. Um, and yeah, that was a cool experience. Um, so yeah, I do have one. So red seal and blue seal, um, jealous. <laughs> what what are some of the takeaways? Obviously, we are talking in our podcast. They, we always say that anyone can be an electrician, anyone can pull the wire, but it's really hard to run that business. What is it? What have you learned in your business training? Uh, like that was a really important eye opener or key takeaway. I think the like to sum it up in one sentence, for me, it would be hire an accountant. Like no matter what scale of business, if you're more than a one man crew, I think that there's so much to that, you know, business side of things and the tax side of things. I think two of the courses I took were related to like accounting and tax. And it was just, it's so tough to keep on top of. So that'd be my advice to anyone. It's like, yes, maybe take something like the blue seal requirements to get a little bit of that lingo and a little bit of that knowledge. But I mean, what it really taught me was if you're, if you're focusing on your electrical business, don't spend time focusing on your accounting. That's not where your strength is. Right. Yeah. And I mean, your, your whole idea, if you're running a contracting business, you want to be the one that's out making the money with that business, not limiting yourself doing the day-to-day -day stuff. So yeah, maybe hiring a, an accountant is a really good idea. I think the business certificate just makes sense if you wanted to run a contracting business, right? You need to have the tools to run a business the same way you need the tools to do an electrical job. Um, was that kind of some of the motivation you used in, in your thought process to doing that, uh, that education, Zach? I had no specific goal to take it and then immediately start a business after anything like that. I think for me, it's just, I've kind of, been on a constant track of always trying to learn something above and beyond what I'm currently doing, you know, like, like with the masters, with the provincial instructor diploma, with this, it's just, I think that the trade has opened so many more doors for me. I think if you can spend a little bit of time, you know, learning this and learning that or picking up new skills along the way, you can maybe, I don't know, open up some bigger doors or at the very least, just keep yourself engaged and in learning. Um, so for me, it just was something that popped up was like, Oh, with well, this business certificate. And I was like, yeah, okay. That sounds interesting. And a lot of the courses sounded exciting. So I yeah, looked into it. And so that was it. Was that a two year, a two year program? No, it was a, I guess a one year, like a 
one step below a diploma uh, with the potential to transfer in if I wanted to in the future. And who knows what's going to happen. It's not off the, out of the question for sure. So we have a lot of electricians right now that, I mean, they're all journeymen. Most of them are Red Seal. Uh, would this be the kind of program that you'd recommend to a journeyman, something for them to continue their education, maybe to help them move somewhere else in industry? Maybe they want to get off the tools and get into the office. Would that, would that be a beneficial program for them? Yeah, I think there's a couple different tracks, right? Really depending on what you're doing. I mean, uh, we've talked about, and I know we're going to have guests on the show and talk about more of the professional electrical contractor designation uh like through the ecaa electrical contractors association of alberta um something like that might be great to get a little bit more of a broad view i mean there's project management certificates if you want to go the project management stream there's courses on estimating out there if you want to become an estimator and you can also transfer into like electrical engineering technology if you like the more technical side of things or power systems engineer or things like that i think there's just so many paths and what drew me to this one is that i didn't have to pick a path really it was kind of like oh well that'll help me if i ever go into this program or help me if i go into this program um but yeah i think there's a lot of options right i mean no the sky's the limit with the trade i think it's not you're not just an electrician. And I, I hate that statement. And from students, I mean, it, we hear the thing all the time and a little bit of a tangent here, but they say, oh, 70s, 100. It just makes me die a little bit inside because I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Is this is this it for you? Is Is being an electrician it for you? And if it is, that's cool. That's so fine. And like, if you love it and it makes you happy, then that's awesome. But don't limit yourself to what could come in the future. I mean, when I applied to this certificate program, I was shocked. They wanted no high school marks or anything like that. It was like, give us a resume and any schooling you've done in the last like, 10 years or whatever. Right. So it wasn't my high school marks that went in. And I tell this story to our young apprentices that come through the program. It's not my high school marks. They wanted it was my trade school mark. So 70 is not a hundred seven, 70, 70. Like, I think that's pretty, clear and that mentality i think is something that could be fixed in our apprentices yeah. right well two things i mean that's a great point um you bring that up too because yeah like what i said last time when i applied for university as well uh, i was paranoid that i wouldn't get in and yeah they they did go back and they used all of my technical marks from when i went to nate and sate so yeah you gotta i mean yeah you definitely want to achieve as high as possible strive for high marks right learn lots because this might not be your only job so and that's i think i mean i don't remember the stat off the top of my head and i mean it's probably different every time we read it but they're like oh only one in four electricians as an electrician after 10 years well they're not just like doing something completely unrelated right it can be such a pathway into all of these great careers i mean instructing obviously is a good career or project management or construction management or building management or labor relations or 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 right like the list goes on i think that the skill set you can develop if you strive to in your career as an electrician is helpful in so many different trades right there's leadership and everything that we're doing right there's business side leadership you know, a lot of soft skills. It's yeah. communications for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. As Absolutely. I interrupt you. Yeah. I'm interrupt, yeah. <laughs> interrupt and say communications is important, but, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's a really good point um, to kind of just say um, that, yeah, don't go for that 70s, a hundred. I always, I always bug students about that too. When they say 70s, a hundred, I go, it certainly isn't when the electrical inspector comes to look at your job site, he's not looking for 70, he's looking for a hundred. Okay, so Zach, we started this podcast this summer, um, but credit is all yours on the idea of the podcast. Um, how did you come up with the idea of having your own podcast based on the electrical industry? I guess it started with, I mean, as we talked about the YouTube channel and how I've kind of experienced that reach to people and I've gotten a lot of feedback from that from people saying, yeah, this is great. This is exactly what I needed. 
and I listen to a lot of podcasts and it's just that, that comment of this is exactly what I needed. And, you know, I was searching one day for some electrical podcast, you know, maybe find something interesting. And there wasn't anything that I was looking for, you know, there was some technical stuff, a little bit of stuff from the States. So all NEC kind of unrelated, some really technical stuff out of Ontario, um, things like that. And I just wanted something that was like, would teach me something else, something new about the industry. I wasn't looking for the technical side of things. We talk about that all day, every day for work. Um, and that's kind of where it started was like, let's just bring people together in our trade. Like there's so many good people involved in the industry and, you know, so many people that I haven't met or that I can learn so much from. Uh, and then, um, then I was like, well, man, I can't do that alone. That sounds terrible. I can't think of good questions to ask people. And here we are. I kind of told you one day, let's do it. And as we mentioned, you committed to three episodes and yeah, you're totally right. I mean, I hadn't thought about that until we did our episode together, but we kind of recorded three and then we're like, okay, what's the fourth one? There was never that discussion of, okay, are we going to continue doing this? It was okay. What's next? And I just, I remember that day we went for coffee and I was like, I was like, come on, man, let's do three episodes. We'll see if people like it. And then you're like, okay, but then we got to reassess and, you know, here we are. Right? And I think we're both having more fun than we planned. And yeah. Well, and I mean, we're always everywhere I go, I go, that could be a podcast. That could be a podcast. Hey, I know a guy let's let's maybe that could be a podcast. So, so I know we're probably driving our spouses crazy with, uh, with our, with our thoughts. Some of them will come to fruition. Some won't. So. Well, Zach, I'm going to have to say thank you for uh, roping me into this podcast. I'm really having lots of fun doing it. Um, I'm sure you're being tormented by me even more now that we're working together. Um, what's one of the takeaways you've had from the podcast so far? Maybe we'll do the first takeaway from you being a co-creator of the podcast. What is there a takeaway there you can share with us? Yeah, I mean, it's... It's one of those things that's very fun, but it's it's tougher than I thought. Like, I mean, it's so fun doing the recording and talking with the guests. It's surprisingly hard to get people to listen. I mean, not in that once we get people to listen, they like I, we're being getting great feedback from industry and from everyone we've had listening. I think there's just so much content out there, right? It's getting people to dig through that to find us and us getting into our flow to make things flow a little bit smoother. Um, so that's kind of the takeaway from making the podcast is just that it's, it's funner than I thought, but it's also harder than I thought, if that makes sense. Well, and it's, it's, it's really nice when we do get the positive feedback. I do have people um, I talk to now and then, and, and they are, they're very positive about the show. They're, Hey, we're listening to the show. I love the show. That's, that's great. I, that's a great perk for me. Um, What's one of the takeaways that you, you have from the podcast, from one of our episodes? Is there anything like that's memorable from any of the episodes so far? They all, they all stand out for, you know, various reasons that I think the most interesting one to me, because I mean, obviously we've had a few guests on that we like know pretty well. Uh, the one that I learned the most, I think was Scott from the IBEW. Um, I never worked for the IBEW. I never knew anything about the union you know, like other than what you hear around and I'm pretty good at not, you know, taking rumor for truth. So uh, that was the most interesting one to me in terms of, I kind of learned the most. Um, but yeah, I think all of our guests have just been like so passionate about whatever they're here to talk about. Right. And that's been, it makes you feel good, right? Like to have these people in the industry who want to come on the show and they want to share what they're passionate about and why they're passionate about it. That's been pretty eye-opening as well. And um, I'm really looking forward to our future episodes to just keep getting that. And then as you say, the positive feedback from industry as well. I mean, yeah, it's wonderful to hear that people like the show and that people are excited that we have put together a show connecting industry like we are. And I mean, I'm really excited about like when you said the passion, because we have uh, our guests have all been very interested, invested people in, in our industry. And I mean, it's, it's so nice to see. 
Um, I'm really interested. I didn't say it in the past, but I, I'm, I, I may have, but I'm really interested in, in strengthening our trade. We're not just a bunch of wire pullers or assemblers, right? I mean, we're the electrical trade. This is a pretty high end trade. Um, and I think it's important that we, we continue to, to tell people that and have that explained in society. I mean, what we do is, uh, is it isn't exactly paint by numbers, um, maybe some days, but, but it's important for us to just keep people aware of, uh, just how important our trade is. Mm -hmm. And it's like any task or job or, you know, place to work, right. You can get so siloed into one very small specific area for years and just lose touch. And maybe this podcast will just give away for people to keep a, keep a finger on the pulse of what's going on elsewhere in the trade, right. About other opportunities and keep engaged in that way. Right. Well, absolutely. And I mean, I mean, and it'll pull us out of our silo and introduce new things. Like that's what we're, we're looking for is really people to pull us into their world. I mean, there's, there's some pretty interesting little narrow, narrow, uh, industries out there in the electrical world. And I mean, people have some very successful businesses with a really narrow skill set. I mean, that's, that's something we look at as well, but, but yeah, you're right. It'd be nice if, if we could learn more about our trade, mm -hmm. um, um, because I mean, back in the day, I didn't know what an industrial electrician was when I was hired as an electrical apprentice. I was like, I don't know what this is, but I mean, now we can get more information. So, and I think it's coming at, at such a pivotal moment in our trade, right. With this transition away from, you know, traditional oil and gas energy into more renewables and alternatives, right. We're seeing lots of movement on that side of the industry and how the electricians are involved in that is really cool. Uh, EV charging and even just making existing infrastructure more efficient, right. I mean, the LED lighting thing is kind of a no brainer now and no question now, but that's when I came up through the trade, right. When it was going from fluorescent lights to LEDs and seeing that transition was cool. So seeing this next big transition is also, I don't know, interesting. I find. Yeah, you're, you're totally right. We're, I mean, we're moving now with, with some of the international politics and treaties for energy now. Yeah. It's, it's, it's coming and uh, our industry is adapting slowly and there's going to be lots of growth and lots of opportunities to learn. So hopefully we can introduce some of that to our listeners and hopefully we can learn more about that ourselves. So, um, so I think we're going to wrap that Zach. So I just want to say, do you have any closing thoughts? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm going to pretty much copy exactly what you said on the last show. I just, if you're listening and you've been listening, we want to hear from you. We want to know what you guys want to hear about. We're, I promise you we're working hard to try and find some interesting guests, but if anyone has any suggestions for future episodes or, you know, listener questions, they want us to find an answer to for them. Send us, our, send them our way. Uh, Facebook, either of us on LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever works for you, reach out to us, let us know. Um, yeah, it's, it's been an experience and I'm looking forward to get going. I know we're, you know, off behind the scenes where we're looking at some ways of making the podcast a little more accessible and, you know, maybe getting some intro music, you know, things like that. So yeah, kind of my yeah, last we, thoughts there. But. Yeah. We got to get a little, yeah, a little sassier, I guess, step up our game a little bit. So, <laughs> so we're, we are available on all, um, on all the podcast download sites on Spotify, on Apple, on Google. Right. And you can find all that stuff on our website. Our website is what's the word podcast.com. Yeah. See, I got it right. And that was going to be Zach's job. Zach's of course known for like, and subscribe. Um, I've been told this many times by people that have watched his YouTube channel. And uh, so I hope you continue to do that with Zach's YouTube channel and uh, checking us out on what's the word podcast. So on um, behalf of myself and my co-host, I'd like to thank you for being on the show today, Zach. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Thanks for the chat.